But I think the main things is at the end of the day, volleyball is volleyball. It's in the same nine by nine court, and the rules are the same. So we. Uh, <laughs> Is that on the back of your shirt? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's on the back of your shirt. Beauty, beauty. <laughs> a little free shout out for you. Um, and it doesn't matter who's on the other side of the net. You need to still execute to the best of your ability if you want a chance to win. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the 81 square meters of the best volleyball coverage on the internet. It is the 9x9, nine nine, episode 57. Today is Tuesday, February 28th, 2023. Uh, my name is Rob St. Clair, live from Chicago. That is Everett DeLorme, live from Toronto, north of the border. Everett, it was an extremely big weekend. Hardware was given out all across Europe. Cups there on were... cups on cups on cups. cups. Cups on cups. And the first one, the most notable for sure that we have to start with, Piacenza wins the Coppa Italia. They go to Rome. They go 6-0 and in sets. They take the Copa Italia, the first in their franchise's history, and they do so at the expense, handing the first loss of the season, uh, taking away the chance for the perfect season, and taking away the chance for five trophies from Perugia. Thanos, the infinity gauntlet, cannot be completed. Piacenza wins the Copa Italia. They three-dong Perugia in the semis. They three-dong Trentino in the final wow i i don't even know yeah. where to start with this i mean first and foremost this is the the piacenza team that we've expected all year long this is right. the piacenza team that we were waiting i feel like this meme is very apt it's like you know iron man has finally showed up he went back through time he figured it out um i like how you said in the discord that the uh figure it out uh award of the week sponsored by avero voli malonza goes to Piacenza for finally figuring it out. For actually um, doing it. <laughs> actually doing it because that, that's exactly what it was. But I do think that it was it was a, a, a tale of two teams going, having two different games in this one, right? Piacenza played absolutely out of their minds and Perugia just couldn't get anything going. Nothing going at all. They just looked hopeless, especially especially from the baseline three sets 23 miss serves 23 miss serves horrible serving numbers i honestly think that the kind of the story of of both this entire copa italia tournament and the polish cup and a lot of these cups i was looking at the stats all of it seemed to come down to serving like Every perugia's serving. serving was was dreadful we'll talk about the other games later but uh yeah perugia's serving so bad conversely piacenza 11 aces like 11 yeah, aces and then, and then 10 blocks and three sets. Like those are massive point scoring numbers. And I mean, this was a frustrating game to, 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 to yeah, watch. It was, right? it was 44 miss serves in three sets on either it's side. Really right. Bad. The, the only the, like Piacenza missed 21 Perugia missed 23. The only thing that Piacenza's ACE to air, air, air ratio was a lot higher. 11 aces to five. Brizald had four to himself. Um, Including the was, one that won the first set in overtime. It, that was very clutch. Yeah. It was like when you looked at the stats, like what uh, Rom Romano led the match with only thirteen points. Like, what is this? This yeah, is like just... this is this is this is what I was expecting from the OUA quarterfinals when I was watching like he here on on Saturday. Not from the Copa Italia. Not from the like hands down best best club team in the world, a team that could probably compete at the national team level and might win some hardware too. Like. What is going on? Like to me, I think that on one side of the net for Perugia, this is just one blip. You know, we've talked Probably. so much about we've talked so much about how this team it's going to be so hard to go perfect. How it's going to be so hard to 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 be undefeated. Now, I thought they're going to get the the Infinity Gauntlet. The fact that they lost in the semifinals the way they did is, is shocking to me. But I think this is going to be a one one game blip, and they're going to be back to their old selves next. But for Piacenza. This could be what kicks the cat. This could be the the not the straw that breaks the camel's back. Maybe the the tensor bandage that that repairs it all, because <laughs> this this could get them going again. I know I've said that before this season, but this could get, really get them going again. They've got their guys back. It's it's all good. Piacenza is a, it's, is a scary team at the moment. So let's let's talk about the final, and then we can talk about just the, kind of these teams a little more broadly. So at, this was the semifinal that we're talking about: Piacenza beating Perugia three zero, uh, close in the first. Then um, they were pretty comfortably 
separated in the second and third. We can talk about uh, <laughs> that question in the chat. Who is worse, Leon or Gianelli? Good question. We can talk about that in a little bit. We got to talk about the final as well. Piacenza then advances to 3-0 Trentino, which was just as surprising. Definitely a cleaner match of volleyball. Again, incredible serving and blocking numbers from Piacenza. 10 aces to only 14 errors is a phenomenal ratio. Um, nine much blocks. Better. Yeah, much better. Yoan de Leal was terrific. 18 for 27. Well-deserved MVP of the tournament. Uh, you also could have easily argued Antoine Brizard, his serving. I think he had nine aces in the two matches combined, which is which is just off the charts. And Trentino, although Matej Kaziski was extremely good, which is kind of the opposite of how I was talking about Trentino a couple episodes ago where most of the team has been good and Matei Mate has been a little iffy on the right side. He was great. Micheletto was terrible offensively. Lavia was not much better. So Trentino, uh, again, sort of just the bridesmaid in this whole situation, and Piacenza gets some all-important hardware. My question before we talk about the other teams a little bit, Everett, is Piacenza a Scudetto contender now after having won this tournament? Absolutely. I mean, like just just from just from their roster alone, like we've we've always thought that they're a Scudetto uh, contender. Now, I do think it's an outside chance. Right. But I've been preaching now for for a while that I think that Trentino was the only team that could really make a move there. And now I think that Piacenza it, is the other one. Right. Like I think that they when you look at this roster, when they have Lally and Lally and Simone and because all his going. Like this is a, is, is a team that can, that can go. We all know how Romano can play in those clutch situations, right? When it gets down to gut check time, he comes out to play. Um, one thing I do want to say about Trentino, though, is that I, I definitely want to start calling them uh, Catherine Heigl because 27 dresses, baby, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Uh, <laughs> Trentino just needs to, needs to, to figure it out uh, a little bit. And when all three of those pieces of the, the puzzle are, are working together, you know, with, with their three outsides, it's fantastic, but not the, we, we, we just don't see that enough. It seems that I, I, usually it's either Micheletto or, or Kaczynski that's, that's having a game off, maybe La, Lavia as well. Not having Lisniach really hurts them. Definitely. Um, but yeah, Trentino, this is like, this is, this is what I expect of them. Like a very solid team. They execute well, they, they play hard, but I don't know if they're going to the push, really push those top teams. But conversely, talking about Piacenza, Absolutely. You know, I think if there's one team that strikes fear in the heart of Perugia, it's a it's a it's a Piacenza team that's rolling. So who wins a five match series if they were to play, say, like the say, say they were to play in the semifinals, Trentino and Piacenza again, rematch of the final. Who wins that five match series? At this point, I'm still going to have to go with Perugia, right? They, no, they, they... Piacenza versus oh, Trentino. Not oh, sorry, Perugia. sorry, sorry. I, I forgot. Oh, so let's let's say that's a semifinal, maybe, and may, maybe it could be. Let's say that's a semifinal, and the winner probably plays Perugia in the final of the Scudetto. Who wins a five match series between Piacenza and Trentino? I think I have to almost go with Piacenza at this point. Like, if you if you look at this roster and and you look how it's how it's put together, like this team is built to win, right? And they're they're starting to figure it off. They've they've shaked off the boogeyman that was Bernardi. Um, yeah. and, and yeah, now huge congratulations together. to Massimo Botti for winning this tournament. Yeah. That's very yeah. validating. For his and it, it looks like they've actually signed him to be the coach and not just the interim, uh, at, at this, at this point wow. too, from what, what I've seen from the discord, I can't hundred percent confirm that. Um, but you know, this is, this is a team full of champions. Simone has won this league multiple times. Romano is a European and world champion. He's called is an Olympic champion. Right, Lucarelli is an Olympic champion. Leal is an Olympic champion, and 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 they've won themselves. Like this is a team that knows how to win. And while Trentino is very skilled and 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 good, especially that injury Lisniac, it takes away. They're they're a team that like the the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Right, just because of how they work together and 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 how they do everything. Whereas like each and every single one of Piacenza's parts is good. Right. And with, you know, Lucarelli and, and Leal back and, um, you know, you, depending on, on how the roster is, you can go to Ricine on the bench. This is this is a team that's that's going to be really good. And I think it's I think that if, if it is Piacenza versus Trentino, that series is going five for sure. And I love it. I absolutely I love it. it. Uh, but I'm I'm going to pick it the opposite way. I think Trentino would win that series. I think that the okay. way that Piacenza won this tournament is kind of the exact the the only way that you can catch lightning in a bottle and beat Perugia this year is to just 
light it up from the service line one match put on all the service pressure in the world win the servant pass battle beat him in a match and that's exactly what piacenza did in the semis i don't think that's sustainable for a five match series no matter who they play against i think that piacenza is still a little bit too fragile and while their individual pieces know how to win i don't really they, they don't portray themselves to me as a team Whereas Trentino really does. Trentino is galvanized. They've had this crew that has gone deep in so many series and Champions League in, in Italy the last couple of years. That team has been there before as a team. Piacenza's guys have been there as individuals, and it's taken them so long this season to figure it out. I'm still not convinced that it's sustainable, even though their level in, in just in two matches in a row was pretty darn high. I, I don't think that you can rely on double-digit aces every match in a five-match series. I don't think that's... That's a, a, a method for winning a playoff series that you can really rely on and be guaranteed. So uh, I, yeah, Piacenza is, is very scary. They can Obviously, they've just proven just now that they can beat any team in, in all of Europe, and especially Italy. But if I were to project them against Perugia in a five-match series, I, I would see that like 3-0 or 3-1 Perugia. The only way Perugia loses another match is if a copy of the semifinal happens again where it's just a sloppy error fest and Piacenza has a superior match serving the ball. It's just the only way I see Perugia losing a series, and I, I don't think that can happen with a high enough sample size. One thing to note here, Rob, currently Trentino sits in third and Piacenza sits in, in sixth. So that might be a first round yeah. matchup for these first two round, teams. like a best of three series. Now the that might be a different three series. That might be a different story. I could maybe see Piacenza winning a best of three series. That mm -hmm. would be yeah. very interesting. Hundred percent. So that I mean, what this to me is that it just inserts another piece of the pie in it. That's that's much more lethal. And to think one week ago on this very show, you know, in my eyes, I thought Leal was out. You know, he had just suffer, suffered an, an ankle injury. He had gone down. We didn't know if he was going to play again this season. We didn't know if he was going to be out for the rest of the year, what have you. And, you know, he goes and, and, and wins the MVP, right? Yeah. So this this just got a lot more interesting. And I've really, really thought that all this Piacenza team needed was uh, a little bit of belief. And I think that they got it, right? I, I, I truly think that they got it this week. Um, and I mean, I think we can, we're, we're going to have a bit of a special guest later on at the end of the show, uh, who might be able to give us an, uh, some insight, uh, in, in a manner that only he can, um, if you know, if you know, you know, but you'll, you'll, you'll see at the end of the show. So yeah, very much looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, I, you said it, it makes all the difference in the world for Piagin. So to have Leal and Lucarelli both back and healthy, that completely different team when they can do that. Uh, and I, I, again, their serving was just so impressive. I'm curious to see the next, like the last two super Lega games of the season, if they can keep that sort of thing up. Piacenza's got Cisterna followed by Padova, both winnable games. But honestly, if I were them, I would kind of like where I am in the standings right now. So I'm curious to see how they attack that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think we should talk about Perugia a little bit, though, a, a, a little bit more. Let's 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 dig into why they why they lost that game. The question earlier, who was worse, Gianelli or Leon, is a crazy question to ask with two of the very best players in the world at their positions. That was as bad as we've seen Wilfredo Leon play in a long time. His numbers were not good at all. No. he hit, His hitting percentage was 23%. His efficiency was essentially like 5%. Yeah, 1 right? for Only six, yeah. six kills on 26 is absolutely bonkers. Um so for him, you know what? Yeah, that's unthinkable. But, but but that's the thing is that it's the fact that they we're talking about that and that it's so unthinkable for Leon just shows how, you know, this isn't a downward trend. This isn't, you know, a, a, am I worried about them? No, this is one bad game. And if anything, I think that might galvanize them even further, right? Like they they lost out on, you know, as we talked about, one of arguably one of the biggest stages within Italy in Rome in the Supercopa sem semifinals. Great um, atmosphere, by the way. Great, yeah, awesome. a absolutely electric atmosphere. It was awesome. If only we had a baseline cam cam angle, it would have made it all the better. Um, but yeah, it it's just, um, I don't really see much worry. I think sometimes the wheels just fall off. You know, the cogs just start working. You wake up on the wrong side of the bed. You can use any euphemism you want. End of the day, this is still the best team in the world. 
and I'm not too worried about them in the long term. I, I agree. I, th- I think uh, sample size is Perugia's friend. The longer a series goes, the better they are, the, the more chance that, that the better team is going to win in, in any series of any length, more than just one match. Uh, a, a question in the chat, is there a stat for how many in-system balls Leon had felt like every ball was a high ball? That's true. Uh, that's because Piacenza served the ball so well. So I, I give them all the credit in the world for that. I, I agree with you. I think Perugia is going to be totally fine. This is one bad match. I think there is a chance that it does galvanize them, and it's it kind of is good sometimes to have a great team be tested a little bit. We've seen that happen to Corneliano on the women's side. They've come out better mm-hmm. for it. I do wonder, though, if the, if the rest of Europe has just now been given a blueprint on how to beat this team. And uh, in both Champions League and the, the rest of Italy, as the playoffs come around, I'm I'm curious to see how much how many teams study the way that Piacenza served, the way that they defended, and um, just what they did to capture lightning in a bottle that day, and how other teams in Europe can replicate it. Yeah, but you're not going to have Perugia miss 23 serves in three sets again. Probably you know, you're, not. You're not going to see Leon swing six for 26 again. Like Probably I guarantee, I'm gonna guarantee you that's not gonna happen. So, yeah, absolutely. Like any team can put it on. Like you can put it on the whiteboard before the game. Like bomb serves, but you know, I, I, I easier said than done. That's exactly yeah. kind of what I mean about Piacenza's the, the the way that they won this tournament is that I don't think that you can just decide that that's the way you're gonna play every match. Serving is just a, a volatile skill. But if there's one team that could do it, when you look at, once again, Leal, Lucarelli, Simone, Bizarre, Romano. It, it, yeah. Romano. It's, it's a scary lineup of servers. It's a scary it really lineup is. For, like, like for, for a team from the baseline. Piacenza might be the best team from the baseline. I mean, I know when you look at Parisia, you have Leon and, and, and Herrera. If, if he's on Plotnitsky, potentially, or Semenyuk, you know, take your pick. They're all, all good. But if you want to go back to that Piacenza versus Trentino conversation uh, uh, real quick, I was not convinced by P- or by Trentino's five set win over Milano, right? I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that <laughs> they, up. I like, wanted like, to talk I, about that too. I, I was not convinced at all. I didn't think they looked fantastic in in any way. The efficiency wasn't great. They only made three actually attacking errors uh, on the day, which which was all right. But still, like this Milano team shouldn't be good enough to go toe to toe. Like I'm sorry, like, Paolo Poro is a mid level setter, right? At best. At best, like I don't even know if he'd start for Team Canada. And for those in the Discord, you know about how how much of a, a discussion we've had about Canadian setters recently. If you don't know, join the Discord, get into the conversation. Um, but like, there's so many times, and the 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 camera angle in uh, Rome is a little bit lower, so I, I maybe almost like it. I like it a bit a little better maybe than the traditional one. But you could see how many times he's just not connecting with his setters, like. He still like it, it's no different than when the Modena days when he was wearing an XL shirt and he looked like he was swimming in it, uh, you know, like a, a five year old kid playing soccer on a Saturday morning. Um, I I'm not convinced by 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 uh, Milano at all and Trentino going to five with them in the way that they did and in the way that they got handled in in, in the finals. Uh, I'm I'm not too I'm not too sure about this Trentino team at the moment. Yeah, Trentino should be better than Milano 10 times out of 10. They should take care of him, even without Lisa Knott's able to play like most of the match. He he appeared, but he didn't start. The, again, the serve the, the story in, in this other semifinal was serving because Milano went up 2-0 to zero and got reverse swept. Uh, part of it was because Yush- Yuki Ishikawa got a little bit banged up, but listen to some of these numbers. The first two sets for Milano, five aces to 12 service errors in two sets. A lot of errors, but at least they got some return on it, right? Those are the two yeah, sets for they sure. won. Rest of the match, zero aces, 14 service errors. It's a recipe for losing. On the other side, Trentino, the first two sets, three aces to 14 errors. Too many errors, even despite a little bit of return. The rest of the match, five aces, only six errors. They cleaned it up significantly. That is such a clear statistical turnaround after set number two and it's just it's just too easy to point to that as the reason why Trentino was able to turn it around that and the Ishikawa injury that that was my next question does Milano win this game if Ishikawa plays the fifth or was like at this point like the the the, the momentum was already on the Trentino side right but man yeah, those none of those Ishikawa sets were close like 19 16 15 to 9 yeah Ishikawa was a workhorse in in this one like 20 point he was passing the ball 
very, very well. Maybe not exceptionally, only 14% perfect, but 51% positive. So that that's that's really, really good. Um, but he was an absolute workhouse, workhorse for, for them in this one. Um, and offensively, man, a bad poor, put him back in the middle because five for 17 just won't do it. Not at all. Um, you know, like I, at this point, you know, do we do we start like a free Ishikawa chant? Do we do we need him to go to a to a different team, a better team? And like this is me talking about Ishikawa right here. Um, maybe you know either either get him out of Milano or get someone who can actually dish the butter a little bit decently. They they need a better setter, and I, I don't know where they're going to get one from. Their roster construction is just a little bit questionable. They're handcuffed by the foreigner limit. They can't figure out consistency at outside hitter. And I do like that they were redistributing the offense back to favor the left side rather than chucking every ball to Patri because we know how bad Poro is at setting behind him. That was better, and that kind of helped Milano get out to that lead. But uh, they're they're a, they're a mid level team. They got they got a great upset against Lube in the quarterfinal. Good job. You, you got to Rome. You got to play in that atmosphere. You went up to nothing because Trentino was playing sloppy, and then the, be- the better team figured it out. There's not really that much that I take away from that other semi. Nah, figure it out, bud. All right. Figure it out. Uh, figure it out. Um, yeah, I mean, hey, I mean, is, is it really an up, upset against Lube with their with their current roster right now? I don't. I don't really know. Outside of uh, outside of Perugia, um, Trentino, and now Piacenza, I think everyone else is just not mid, but just all right. You know. Like they're 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 not super great, but it's it. There's definitely no strong top four like we've seen in, in past years. Agreed. Uh, and I just want to marvel at this this beautiful Thanos Iron Man graphic one more time before we move on. Uh, anything this, else about the, anything else about the Coppa Italia, or, or can we move on from it? No, I, I I think we can move on. I think this needs to be posted on on uh, the Volleyball Source Instagram on the Nine by Nine and, and Volleyball Source Instagram. Uh, after the show so if you, if you want to go do that uh let's do that make sure we tag both the teams uh Consider hopefully done. Ho- hopefully P- Piacenza um um James, why do why did you have the volleyball world logo in there because it's it's the club world championship the club world championship doesn't have a logo and oh actually, okay sorry I'm actually sensing. none of none of these tournaments have logos i was i was i was going crazy trying to find logos to put as the infinity stones instead i just typed super cup over the del monte logo and i typed club world championship over the volleyball world logo because that's because there are no logos for those things and then i painstakingly cut out the outline of the actual italian cup trophy for the piacenza bit but i i hope it resulted in an enjoyable meme for the people <laughs> real quick from the chat imagine nishida playing with leon in perugia next season no don't even get me started that's one of the worst rosters you could ever construct it's that would joke. be that would be bad that would be horrible bad. that would be bad news bears uh absolutely not um very bad yeah all right let's let's move on because we said it was cup weekend uh let's move on to poland and i mean hey we right we, we, we called it this team is now rolling um they blaze through uh, the, the Polish cup here in Zaksa is looking pretty damn good. That the two fu- two time defending uh, Champions League uh, uh, winners are they are they a team to look at for the Champions League? Are they a team that is is co- getting hot at the right time? We weren't high on them at the beginning of the season. Now they just blow through this tournament. What what's what's your take on this one, Rob? Well, the, I mean, obviously the pickup of Bartosz Bednors is enormous, but somewhere, somehow, some way, Alexander Schliwka has returned to that Champions League MVP form from two seasons ago. The last couple matches that he's played have been off the charts good. He yeah. was lights out when they beat Xavierce in Champions League. He was lights out when they beat Xavierce in the Cup semifinal on Saturday, and he was lights out again in a 3-0 win over JW in the final. He was supremely clutch. Swivka yeah. and really Zaxa as a whole. Like in, in that final against JW, I think it was what, like 27, 26, 23? Like they won every set by three points. Schliefka had an ace in overtime in the first to win it. They fought off set points in the second. Smith had an ace late to win it. At like the 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 late game clutch factor of Zaxa is the most inspiring and convincing part to me about this team and it is starting to remind me of the teams that went back and won those two those last two champions leagues it is the way that they somehow when they need to find a way they just do it and that is not really a thing that you can teach or that shows up on paper but when you watch the games and when zaxa needs to find a way they find a way 
Yeah, absolutely. Shuf- Shufka was a uh, combined 51% efficiency offensively this this weekend. For a guy of that match. play style, that's amazing. Amazing. Massive. Abs- absolutely massive. And he's just... It's, it almost looks like I, I found at times last year that they were too heavy on Semenyuk, you know, and that they would just go in on him way too much and they would just just beat it into him. And it was all about Semenyuk and Shlifko was just kind of had taken the back seat. And now it seems like they're just they're just spreading it out a little bit more um, because, you know, Ben Norris is, is still doing all right. He's still putting up points like what? 17 in the final. Uh how many did he have in the semi here? Yeah, Ben um, Norse has been good. 17, uh, like 36% efficiency is pretty good. Both passing the ball pretty well. Like That that was another thing about this final that's important to point out. Zero aces for Yashemsky. Zero. Zaksa yeah. did such a good job fighting off tough serves, just putting them on the three-meter line. That was... I looked to me like a pretty clear strategy watching the game. They they were not trying to put Janusz right on top of the net. He can make those plays, but he can also make the plays setting the offense just as good as normal from three meters. They did such a good job fighting the fighting tough serves off to give up zero aces against a pretty good serving team is really impressive. Yeah, Boyer is the only uh, JW player in double digits with only 10 points, but he was ahead of 26% efficiency on the day. Um, not bad, just because yeah, JW had no choice but to change something up. They brought in both Hadrava and Teravaporti, et cetera. They, they, nothing else they could do. Yeah, I mean, at, th- at that point, that's probably the right move to make, right? Like, sure. you, you, you got to change something up. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh... It's it's what I'm more more impressed about about all of this is how steadfast Zoxa stayed. You know, to win three sets in with by two points like that, two of them in you know overtime, if you will. Um, in those ones, this is a team that's focused, and this is a, this is a team that's ready. Um, and especially the way that Rosovia lost uh, in the semifinals <laughs> to we'll get to that. <laughs> To, to, to JW, I mean, I think they're still at the top of the standings right now. But man, this is just a classic Rosovia choke show. Uh, must be something with that that red and white color scheme coming out of that country because uh, choking is in their blood. Like choke, choking, it choking is a habit. Ouch! Yikes! Uh, yeah, JW. Somebody in the chat says like, is J is Zaxa winning this game similar to Piacenza winning the Coppa Italia? I would oh. honestly say no, and I would trust Zaxa more. I trust Zaxa more because of the way that they win. Again, like the the, the late stage clutch, fa- clutch factor that you just can't teach. Uh, yeah. And they are extremely scary. They've got Trentino in Champions League. That two match series is going to be a banger. If they win that, they probably have Perugia, which is going to be a banger as well. And they might be my pick now in Poland because they just have Yashimsky's number for some reason. They've had it the last couple of years. They absolutely have Xavierce's number. And with what we just saw from Rosovia on Saturday, I don't trust them whatsoever. No. And one thing I do want to give uh, give a shout out to is Marcin Janusz because Janusz yes. has been setting, has been spreading that butter from you know crust to crust. Um, and it's been, just been uh, unreal. When you look at the semifinal, twelve points for Kashmarik, twelve points for Bednors, twelve points for Slivka, ten points for uh, for Pat- Patishki. You, you, you Patishki take is the Ukrainian yeah. middle guy. Yeah. Is it can take the pronunciation on that, and then once you get to the finals, fourteen for Kashmarik, seventeen for Bez, Bednors, eighteen for Shlivka. Like he is, and you look at look at the amount of the amount of uh, attack. Oh wait, no, that's that's the reception numbers. Um, but still, like the attacking numbers are all really close. Twenty five for a piece for the two outsides, thirty one for the right side. He is just spreading that offense evenly, and that's why they're so hard to defend right now because they've just got wep- they've just got weapons everywhere, and. They've got skilled guys everywhere, and that's what makes them so dangerous. They play a sustainable style of successful volleyball. Pass the ball to three meters, distribute your offense easily, evenly, play great defense, and be clutch late. Like That is a, a blueprint that can take you a really long way in volleyball and reminds me a lot of those Zoxa teams that, that won some serious hardware the last couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's going to be interesting and moving forward uh, just Let's because see, I think... What? I want to talk about some of the semifinals because it's it was a bummer because this tournament which was which was awesome almost twelve thousand people in the stands in Krakow in the finals which was unbelievable it's just like everything you could dream about about Polish volleyball unfortunately all three of these matches were three dogs <laughs> and yeah. while the the, fi- the final was very competitive Zaksa versus Zavierce in the first semi not competitive at all uh, Euros Kovacevic negative efficiency and that's enough that's all we have to say about that match. 
Yeah, absolutely. They live and die by Kovacevic. And yeah, like nine points is, is just not good enough. Bartesz Kulik had Locked eight. nine times. With, yeah, Kulik had a 15% efficiency in, in the semi uh, final there. So um, it's just not good enough. And I mean, once again, this was a team at the beginning of the season that we thought might be the best. Same thing with JW. Like it, we've seen all four of these teams really at one point or another look like the best in Poland. But truly, I think that like the cream rises to the top and that's what we're seeing with Zaksa uh, right now. When we head over to the other semifinal though. Man, Rasovia. Yikes. Yikes. Just I did, I did call it on last week's show. I, I, I did say that this is about the time when the Rasovia curse starts to strike and they laid an egg. A red and white striped egg in that semifinal. Bad volleyball. Yeah, they did it. Massimo Jai was a minus eight on efficiency. Jan Kozmarek minus twenty five. Just bad uh, all, all around. Um, the foul got was bad. Unfortunately yeah. for me, blocked six times. Like the only one that was good was Chibul. Right? He yeah. was he was nine for seventeen. Didn't get blocked. Had no errors. He had a fifty fifty three percent efficiency and and hitting percentage. Um, but yeah, just just a tough look there by by uh, by Rosovia. And for me, it just always comes down to one man and one man only, Fabian Driska. You know, it's just, I think he has all the skill in the world, but none of the heart, you know? and I don't think he has all the skill in the world and also none of the heart. <laughs> I think he's, he's very skilled. When you watch him, I think he's a natural on the ball. I think he has a, has a decent set of hands, but I think he's just lacks a physical in everything he does. And it's just, yeah, it, 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 it's 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 just not it's just not a good look. And yes, Kozmarnik, negative efficiency uh, in the middle. He had no kills and four attempts and one error. How so. do you hit negative in the middle? That's like almost hard to do. And, and well, part of the answer is your setter is not good enough. That's what when your entire team's offense is bad, unless your reception as a team is abysmal, which it was nine percent perfect for Rosovia is very bad. But your setter's just got to do a better job. And I I just. Every time I, I I feel like I want to believe in Rosovia, they've had an unbelievable year in the regular season in the Plus League to this point. Every time I want to believe in Rosovia, Everett, I need you to remind me who's who's setting them. And until yeah, they I, move on, until they move on from Fabian Drizga, I I refuse to believe in Rosovia to win anything major. It's just it, it, we've seen it too many times to not understand the pattern of what's going on here. Yeah, hundred percent. I think uh, in this one, Janusz's stock went up. Drizga's stock continues to 100%. plummet. But hundred percent. You know what? I, I think Rosovia has shown for a long time now that he's going to be their guy, and they probably won't win until he leaves. Somebody make the man retire. I mean, they're, they're, it's it's weird because Rosovia is willing to go out and spend in the off season. Like, there's so many rumors surrounding uh, Polish transfers. They're they're the 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 market that annoys me the most about starting the off season way too early. Rosovia is always trying to make splashes with their attackers, but they refuse to fix the actual problem on their team. Yeah, hundred percent. Because they, when you look at the, their passing numbers, they didn't pass bat poorly in this one. Like they're actually I mean, pretty, nine they're, they're, nine percent perfect is bad. Uh, that's like that's not good. I miss, wait, what am I looking at here? Uh, oh no, my bad. Twenty three percent perfect. That's actually not bad. Right. Where, where did I make up that number from earlier? Oh, it was actually JW's passing numbers. <laughs> yeah, right. J- like JW had terrible passing numbers. Wow, that makes even less sense. Yeah, but hey, when you got Stefan Boyer, you just got to chuck it up on a highball. He had twenty points in this one, so th- there you go. Yeah, Boyer was Boyer was fifty nine percent efficiency. That's phenomenal. Gross. Outstanding, outstanding, yeah. outstanding, and they they basically had no choice but to bench him in the final because uh, Tony Uti was getting exposed as a blocker. They they put Hadrava in to be more consistent, and Fornal hit zero percent efficiency in the final. But like Boye, I I, I wouldn't put any of the blame for Yashemsky not winning the tournament on him. Uh, I I am curious. Like there is a rumor that he might go to Rosovia in the off season. That would be one I'm interested to see because I'm just sick of watching Matsi and Muzai play. I'm just sick of watching how uncoordinated he is. I can't handle it anymore. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not great. Interesting, uh, the two semifinal losers, Zavieche, uh and Rosovia, uh, they're going to face off on Saturday. Uh, that one's going to be early. It's at 2.45 p.m. Poland time. So that's going to be Ooh. early in the morning uh, here in North America. Um, so 
that's like what, like 4 a.m. in the morning for or 6 a.m. in the morning for, for North America. That yeah, is that, early. That's rough. Those are the top two teams in the Plus League standings right now. But I think Everett, you and I are on the same page that after this weekend, we would not call either one of them the best team in the league. No, absolutely. I think Zaxa is, is far. I mean, I know they're 10 points back uh, right now. When you look at the roster, you look at how they're playing. Yeah, that, that mid season acqui- that mid season acquisition of Ben Norris was was the transfer move of the year for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. That and Fenerbahce picking up Melissa Vargas on on uh, the women's side. But that was that big one too. Uh, that one we've we've come to expect expect now for for, for the uh, the past few years. All right, so uh, I think that's about it for Poland. They'll get back into the regular season this week. So will Italy, and so will Germany. Uh, Germany has just completed the German Cup. Their semifinals were a while ago, but they finally had the final over the weekend. And stop me if you've heard this one before. The Berlin Recycling Volleys do it again. They drop the first set to Durin. They respond. They win the match 3-1. to one, And more hardware for the boys in black and orange. Yeah, I mean, they've just really become the most dominant team consistently uh, now in, in Germany. And especially taking on um, Durin. I mean, I know that Durin has has beat them at times this season, and we've seen all of those because now, right now, they're doing that weird thing where only the top four teams play, and then the bottom. Yeah, teams, I don't like, really understand that eight. phase of the season. Uh, I don't really, I don't really get it too. Um, but but still, and but you know, Berlin has been consistently the best team in Germany. I'm um, I'm not really too surprised. Um, Timothy Karl um, was was pretty good in this one with 19 points. Mark Sotola who's continued to be absolutely fantastic. You got to wonder though, with the, with the season that he's put together at Berlin, if he's going to be going somewhere bigger, right? If a bigger I contract. I kind of like him there. I, I, it's a good question, but I really like him there. I kind of hope he sticks around. I mean, I, absolutely. I like him there and I'm sure Berlin fans love him there, but at, <laughs> at, at the end of the day, and like Berlin is the one club in Germany that can probably pay you to, to stay. However, you know, if I'm Sotola, I'm starting to look at a Poland. I'm starting to look at an Italy. You know, I, I think you know you want to see if you can go prove yourself. Beating up on teams like Duren and 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 Lundberg and Friedrichshafen just aren't who just aren't the same as as they once were. Um, you know, it, it it is what it is. As much as we love watching the Lundberg boys, and as much as as much as I love watching Duren at, at, at times, there's just it just lacks that extra punch that we see from, you know, leagues in Poland and, and Italy and, you know, even Turkey when you, when you look at it, and of course, Russia uh, as well. So I would, I would, I would be interested to see what Sotola, Sotola does. And if, you know, it all depends on his contract situation. I'm not, I'm not too aware of it. Yeah. I mean, there's not really that much to talk about, about this, about this match. I've looked at the stats. I've, I've watched some highlights. Berlin's better than Durin and that that's it. Like this is the, the, the least dramatic of the of any of the hard work given out over the weekend, I'd say. Yeah, hundred percent. Duran hits twenty nine percent as a team. That's not even that's, efficiency. That's that's yeah, that's their straight up percentage. hitting percentage. They, right? Yeah, thirty kills and eighteen errors total as a team. Like that's that's brutal. Uh, Berlin, meanwhile, fifty nine percent kills as a team, and uh, yeah, sky high efficiency. The stat sheet doesn't have it, but that's you, you can just look at the numbers and figure out everything you need to know. Yeah, the only thing that kept, the only thing that uh, kept Ern in at this one is they only made eleven serving errors, twenty eight on the Berlin side. So that that that's exactly like to, to prove my point. You know, it's kind of a cakewalk for Berlin. They can make twenty eight serving errors. They they can make what like seventeen more serving errors than the the opposing team and still went away with a cup, walk away with a cup win. Yeah, that like, is ridiculous. Eight sir, eight errors for Ruben Schott alone, and who who doesn't add anything in any category? Bad offensive numbers, pretty bad reception numbers, zero aces and eight service errors. Like if if you're Cody Kessel and you can't see the floor over a guy with those numbers, that's probably not going to feel very good. No, yeah. not. But I mean, Cody Kessel was 100% in attacking. He went three for three. That a boy. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Uh, great in the middle too. Berlin, uh, both middles. Uh, Brema and and Nemo get get a big shout out. Both uh, 15 and 12 points respectively. That's a lot of scoring for two middles. Yeah, Anton Brem coming back healthy this season. Like he did get injured injured last year. Um, and you know we, that's why we didn't see him at all uh, in the Nations League last year or at World Champs or anything. I think Anton Brem is going to make a large impact for Germany. 
He's absolutely he's, he, he's a difference maker for, for that team, especially because the way he plays, um, his his window of hitting is so large, right? Because he's so athletic and, and he jumps so high that in somewhat like it, 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 it he doesn't require a perfect pass you know i thought i think anton bram is just going to send crick further down that uh de- that depth chart there uh over for the germany squad where he where he belongs uh yeah. good point from blair uh berlin although they win the league every year they do typically choke in the cup at some point and uh so they they do get one here and the next we're going to see of berlin very soon is uh, actually a week from tomorrow they'll take on perugia in champions league we'll see how that one goes that could go, that could be rough uh, for Berlin, as I'm sure uh, Perugia is going to be on a bit of a redemption tour oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> at that point. So, yeah, should, should right. be an interesting. Let's, let's move on to, from Germany. Not much more to talk about there. Uh, last week, we were talking about the French Cup quarterfinals. Earlier today, we saw the French Cup semifinals. And Everett, I'll let you kind of take this one away because there was some some Canadian action and sort of the, the battle of the underdogs between Nice and Poitiers earlier. Uh, three yeah, absolutely. Two, right? I, I'm, yeah, 100%. I mean, hey, we talked about Stephen Marshall playing in the middle uh, last <laughs> week, going for five for five. Um, I mean, what more can you say? The dude is just an absolute uh, freak of an athlete. Um, but him and his uh, Nice team are going to be moving on into the French Cup finals. And uh, let, let me look here real quick. And yeah, just to, uh, it, just to... it looks to me like Marshall started it outside, I th- yeah. think. Uh, and it actually got pulled in the third set, which is which is a bit of a bummer. It's just weird because his numbers were good. I wonder if something happened. But uh, I didn't realize that Kyle D'Agostino is on this team, so that's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, his reception numbers were good, and uh, Jackson Howe had a great match on the losing side for Poitiers. But um, I, both of these teams are like pretty low down in the French standings, aren't they? Wasn't it just kind of a bonus for both of them to be at this point? Yeah, kind of. I mean, hey, tools is to me when I look at the French league and the LNV, you have tools and everyone else, right? And yeah. and that's that's the the way it's been. Chaumont, who's a, a a usual power, has just not been there quite as strong this year. Montpellier, who won the league last year, started off really really rough, and they've been kind of getting back into it. Sinazer started absolutely phenomenal, has, has cooled off. Same thing with Tolkang, who were undefeated for a while. They've 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 cooled off. So. You know, much like the Italian league, the LNV is very much. You got one team at the top tools who is a Champions League. Last year, we saw them make it made a, a great run uh, in in the CEV Cup uh, as well. Um, and even though they they didn't win, they they lost in the finals of of the French league last year. This is a team that's you know the the cream of the crop when it comes to uh, French volleyball at, at the moment. So yeah, Tours uh, they won their semifinal easily, uh, three to zero. So they'll take on Nice in the final. What's weird is that Cup final is in April. That is really late, and I would assume that the French league will be deep in the middle of the actual playoffs by then, right? Yeah, I I would assume so as well. That's it's always weird when you start looking at how these cups are scheduled. I mean, I think in Germany they played the semifinals like weeks ago or, or months ago. Um, so yeah, it, it it is a little bit interesting, but I w- as as much as I would love to see Marshall and D'Agostino and that Nice team win. I mean, when you look at the standings, they're currently sitting in twelfth, twelfth <laughs> with eight 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 and fourteen record. They have they have twenty two points, just as many teams, just as many as as they've uh, as they've won uh, as they've won. Tools is up there in first um, at eighteen and four. So very very interesting and. I almost I, I I wonder why that is in France because um, even Poitiers they're in eleven <laughs> they're seven fifteen um, also <laughs> with, so with, with twenty two points so yeah that's that's interesting actually when you look at this this the standings here for France because both teams have played twenty two matches both teams have twenty two points and yet Poitiers is ahead of Nice and they have a worse record at seven and, and seven and fifteen as opposed to eight and fourteen so French league's weird man so there's a lot of chaos going on over there. Yeah, absolutely. And I would love to, you know what, I would love to see like, um, once again, like we've talked about Champions League, and I don't know why I'm, I'm going into this, but I'm going into it anyways. I would love to see a mashup of like the French League and the German League playoff. Just, just I think it would be fun. You know, it, it would just be a fun old, a fun old time. Be a little bit different styles, one that's very uh, structured, another one that's that's very technical and skilled. Uh, I, I think it would be good. Maybe sprinkle in a little bit of Turkey in there too. Make it, make it interesting. 
Yeah, that would, that would play right into your uh, proposed European format where you just kind of throw everyone in one competition and let them sort themselves out uh, th throughout the season, which would be fun. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, absolutely. All, All right. right. Bef before we talk about the women's, because there are uh, no women's cups over the weekend, but still plenty of women's volleyball to talk about. Uh, Everett, uh, what, what sweatshirt you got going on over there? Looks pretty nice. Oh, you know, just the the nine by nine squared sh sweatshirt, just repping the swag a little bit. Um, swag stuff we all get. If you know that reference, you're a real one. Um, and you're probably not uh, from Gen Z or you just watching a lot of Netflix. Um, but make sure you head over to that volleyball.store. Use the code SPICY to get 15% off your entire purchase. You can get the 9 by 9 squared stuff. You get some spicy volleyball gear. Uh, the If you know, you know line. Um, and plenty of other stuff. Uh, make sure you go uh, check it out. And once again, use the code SPICY for 15% off. Also, I do have to apologize for people who have purchased things recently. I don't know what happened, but the... Uh, Printful got disconnected from the Shopify, so they just weren't sending. People were buying things and weren't sending. So it's been fixed now. You should be getting your, your merch. Just another good reason to go in and uh, support the boys a little bit, you know? Um, and if you if you don't want to spend your hard-earned do dollars to support us, we understand. Um, but there's other ways to support us. A, you can head over to this video right now. Only six likes. Guys, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, that's like give us a thumbs up at, at least at least just to tell us you hate us right just just give us a <laughs> thumbs up there's more people in the chat than than we have likes um so so give us a nice like come join us at the discord the link should just be in the show notes below um and yeah it it, it uh come come support us G give us a like follow the channel head over to that volleyball dot store and uh and check it out all right yeah, let's head over good. to Good time for volleyball stores. Got to shout out the podcast that you do with Eric Lepke, by the way, uh, which was phenomenal. Very, very good interview. Great to hear from him. You got into a lot of like the Canadian national team summer and his career overseas and sort of what what some North American volleyball looks like and just everything uh, up to date with with EFL. So that, that was great to hear. A uh, very, very good interview. Go check that out. Yeah, it, it was dope. I mean, once we talk about it a little bit in the interview, like I've I've been interviewing that dude for almost a decade now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it's just, it's just, it's just a lot of fun to just sit down and talk volleyball with him. And I think that he's got such a different perspective on everything now that he is a dad. And, you know, he's a guy that has really succeeded for so long, especially at the Canadian level and, and been the next guy up. And we saw him struggle this summer on the national team. We saw him not have a great year at, at Padova last year. So for him to uh, come back and have a, a strong year, um, it's, it's, I'm really happy for him and, it's only to be up from here and he does you know he does share a little bit of insight as you said from the canadian national team this summer and you know what's going to potentially looking like look like moving forward so yeah make sure you go check that out also i did just release um uh, another podcast with uh, a guy by the name of dylan mortensen who you might learn his name real quick he was now the all-time leading scorer and kills leader uh in the canada west and his saskatchewan huskies um defeated ubc over this past weekend and are one step closer to nationals so um yeah make sure to make sure to go check those out and uh, maybe drop us a line who, who do you want to see me interview next if uh big shout out to taylor mm. avril who I've, I've chatted with him about doing a podcast with with avril and he just hasn't come really? back to me so yeah yeah Dude, I, I, sent him a, I, sent him, I sent him a dm on instagram and i was like yo would love to have you on would love to chat and he's like yeah man let's do it let me t I'll, I'll figure out my schedule and just, it hasn't made but you know what uh, i think it'd be a good one a little tallest podcast on earth with the pod volleyball source podcast a little crossover episode it would be a Thank nice little crossover so uh yeah good time for volleyball source yeah comment in the video after this is over uh leave us a comment after the live stream is over about uh who you want to see next on just pick a player who do you want us to interview because we can decent chance that we can make it happen well we can get connected with most anyone in the volleyball world these days yeah i, I would hope so i, I would yeah. i would hope so yeah me too all right, so let's shift our attention to the women's game, Everett. Let's catch up on the Champions League. So uh, a couple weeks behind where the men were at a couple weeks ago, it is the playoffs, as we're calling it, uh, with the reformatted Champions League. It's these sort of play-in series that play into the quarterfinal round. And uh, last week, we already talked about Fenerbahce beating Hemik Polizze 3-2. to two. So we already talked about that last Tuesday, but there were matches last Wednesday both three dongs, Vakif Bank beat Woods 3-0, no problem. And Lukhane beat Rzezhov 3-0, no problem. 
So all of those, all three of those return legs are this week. Uh, Vakif Banks matches tomorrow. Uh, Fenerbahce Police is Thursday, and Jezhov Lekane is Thursday as well. Do you see any upsets happening? Maybe any golden set potential in these second legs, or is it going to be kind of chalk from here? I, you know what? I was really surprised by the Le Valero Le Canet um, versus Zhezhov um, match, mostly because thought, thought that like, would when, be closer too. Yeah. Well, but like mostly because like Zhezhov is the top of the Torn Liga right now. They're leading in Poland, and Valero Le Canet is not not even a top team. Like they're an average team when you look at the Liga Femina, uh in France. Like where are they right now? Um, they're in fifth right now. In, in the French league, whereas, you know, Zhezhov is, is leading. And, you know, you make arguments, but like, there's no foreigner rule and there's no foreigner limit in France. So the, even though they're, they're chock full with Russians, that's the team that they can run in France too, exactly. right? Like there's, there's, there, there, there's none of that. So that's one that I, I didn't watch that match, but that's one that I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on um, this week because it's, it's, it's a big one. And I think with Zhezhov, and with Polish teams in general, on the women's side, they just haven't been able to break through yet. You know, um, they, they, they just haven't really been able to break through. And I think that this would be a really big blow, a massive blow for a Polish women's volleyball if they can't, uh, they can't pull through this one. Nine errors for Zhezhov as opposed to Dakenez, only, only three uh, errors in attacking. So that one is going to be very interesting. Um, and I don't know. Antigua, you know, I loved him in coaching for Team Canada, but God, Stefan Antigua was there. Yeah. Oh, good call. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This this one this week for Zhezhov is at home. I think that'll help. Uh, everyone likes playing at home, obviously. But yeah, the worst Lucane can do is Golden Set. We talk about it all the time in that two match series format. I did watch this one at least for a while. I saw I watched the first set. It was twenty five to fifteen, and then I turned it off. Uh, although it did get better after that. Uh, twenty nine, twenty seven, twenty five, twenty two. But yeah, Lucane and all the Russians look very good in Champions League, which is weird because they're not good at all in the French League, which makes no sense. And on the on the Vakif Bank side, uh, they didn't they didn't even play most of the starters, and they, they won no problem. Like, uh, well, they had a Gonu, no Chaka Bogu, um, no. Who's their other outside hitter? What's going on here? Uh, oh yeah, they, they didn't have John Suos by set for some reason. Uh, so they they played a sort of an abbreviated version of the bench lineup, and they still took care of Woods very comfortably, including twenty five to twelve in the second set. You know what? You know what I found interesting when I when I tuned into this one is remember when Valentina Diouf was like the next big thing in women's volleyball playing Italy, for Italy, yeah. <laughs> right? And it's just like she—I she, forgot like, she was in Poland. Yeah, I, I forgot she even existed. You know, like it, it was just like where where did she come from? Um, so yeah, I was I was watching that and I was like, oh yeah, Diouf was on that team. She used to be a stud. What happened to her? And it was just kind of like the ghost of the ghost of Italy past versus the co- ghost of Italy uh, present versus with you versus uh, Agono out there. Huh. Yeah. I don't see that series being dramatic at all. I mean, not, not no. that uh, anybody was going to predict that that was going to be any good. I, I guess maybe the five setter from last week, uh, Polizze and Fenerbahce might be a little bit better. We were talking last week about how I don't have all that much faith in Fenerbahce, but I do think they're better than Polizze. And I do think they're going to advance. Let's, let's look at the bracket again. Um, so, what what are those potential quarterfinal matchups? Probably Vakif Bank versus Malonza, probably Fenerbahce versus Caneliano, and then probably Lukane versus Ijaja Basha. Then the, the honestly, other one is a Stuttgart versus Novara, which we've already known about for a while. Honestly, I like all of I, I think all of these uh these quarterfinals are gonna be spicy, uh potentially. Except for the which whichever team gets through to play Ijaja Basha is gonna get thumped. Like that's oh yeah, that's that's is what it is. Vakif Bank versus Malonza going to be very interesting. Two teams that have kind of struggled a little bit this year. I do expect Vakif Bank to kind of just walk through Malonza despite their their struggles this year. Fenerbahce versus Canigliano, that's going to be a spicy uh, a spicy quarterfinal. That that could be could be really good. And I think Novara and Stuttgart like Stuttgart like there might be an outside chance that we have a German team in the semifinals here. 
Like Stut- I could Stut- kind of see that. I haven't been impressed by Novara lately, and we'll talk about the Lega Foley Feminile in a minute. But it seems yeah. like there, there, there's been some like sort of infighting in that franchise lately. Like what? There was something that their owner called out Abra Karakert for her performance lately, and that yeah. that quote didn't sit well with the fans. So you never know what's going on over there. No, absolutely, and I mean, I mean, I know that they they reached out to Britt Herbots and they tried to pick her up over the the winter transfer window, and she just straight up said no. I know Haley Washington has been on record about talking about Novara just being kind of a shit show. Um, there's been rumors about Novara trying to pick up a Gonu, and it sounds like she wants Again? nothing, a uh, nothing to do with with that uh, with with that whole. Um, organization and stuff so yeah it's it's been very very interesting to to watch Novara and that's why I think like Stuttgart is a team that has um upset teams consistently like they were the team that that finished at the top of that that Fenerbahce um who's the other team in the uh, uh, Woods and yeah, the Fenerbahce Woods group mm-hmm. yeah ex- ex- exactly and you know Crystal Rivers has been having a great tournament she usually does uh out, out there for Stuttgart so I wouldn't say that it's impossible if we see a German team beat Navarra and head into the semifinals. I would love it. So we'll talk more about the quarterfinals next week because those last playoff series will be wrapped up by Thursday. Uh, so this Thursday, yeah, tune into Champions League the next couple days. Uh, you're of all TV or like CV YouTube for members as usual. Uh, anything else about Champions League? Is there, is there any other CV stuff? Is there any like CV Cup? On the women's side that I missed, I didn't really know about anything. Oh, actually, t- wasn't THY versus Mulhouse the other day? Hmm. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, THY beat him three zero, and it wasn't very close. Same with uh, Scandici beating Potsdam again. That one was a little bit closer. So, I, uh, does that mean we have the semifinals set? Are those scheduled yet? Uh, okay, no, those are the first legs of the quarters. So uh, the, the second legs of the quarters are this week, tomorrow and Thursday. Yeah, THY right. Moolhouse again, Scandici versus Potsdam again, four other irrelevant teams. Yeah, we already talked about it last week. Like THV versus, sorry, THY versus Scandici in the semis is basically going to be the final of that series or that tournament. Yeah, I would agree with that uh, as well. Let's move on to the only league play that is worth talking about uh, for this week is over at the Lega Volley Femininity. And things are getting spicy all over the place. Just chock full of three twos here. You got that three two battle there. Scandici just barely coming out over Very Volley Malonza, but a little bit of drama in that one. Rob, I know you're going to want to talk about that. Above that, yeah. Canigliano going toe to toe with Pinarolo. No idea what what was happening there, but luckily they were able to figure it out. Firenze drops the ball massively by losing in five there to Valfolia. That would have been absolutely huge for them. And Novara barely they they went, down, out. went down two to zero though. They got a bonus point. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll talk about it, but I, I think Still. Valfolia was kind of the one that blew that. Yeah, but it, the opportunity was there for for uh, for, for Firenze, and like that was a team like they've been what five and zero oh since since uh, Malinov has joined that team. And, you know, now, like, had, had they been able to win that match in three, they would have been in eighth place right now with Busto, uh, who lost to Kieri uh, in ninth. And now because they're, they're sitting down there in ninth, one point behind Busto. Hell, they would have been in seventh, right? Because they, they would have been able to jump uh, or at least been tied with Casa Maggiore. Um, so th- things just getting spicier, spicier there, especially with, with that playoff race. Valfolia kind of maybe keeps their playoff hopes alive i know that there's still like what five or six matches left F- four no four matches i left. think it's i think it's six, let, let six me look you're right up. yeah yeah six so it, there should be if you play every team twice it, it, there should be 26 matches yeah this so there's still yeah six this, matches. this is so around 20 Val- valfolia hell maybe even cuneo still has a chance to to get in there but massive drop ball in my opinion for firenze a team that was just rolling had, had won their previous five in a row um and unable to 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 make it work but what 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 match do you want to start with here rob let's start with that one because uh, chronologically that one happened on saturday the rest were on sunday yeah volifolia jumps out goes up two to zero all close sets uh but volifolia looked like the better team for once finally the, my girl yeah. annie drews played great 57 attempts points. though or sorry 52 attempts is a lot, but I mean, that's what they signed her to come over and do. So they rode her pretty hard. Other, other than that, in the offense, there wasn't much going on. Firenze does get uh, sets three and four to grab a point, but Volifolia survived. 
Yeah, I mean, hey, Annie Drews went went what twenty seven for fifty two. That's not that's n- not bad it's pretty at darn all. Good. Yeah, Tatiana <laughs> Kosleva uh, mm-hmm. with twenty five points as well. She had she had twenty four kills. Nwakalor was was pretty good uh, overall for uh, Firenze with with twenty two points. Uh, but Britt Herbot's just unable to get going. It's really too bad. We saw her be lights out this summer for Belgium in the in that ill fated Nations League. We're not going to open that can of worms uh. again, but but still. Um, I think that if Firenze doesn't make the playoffs, we're going to look back at this game as being the reason why. And I, I, I truly do because I think that this one is is bigger. You know, the opportunity was there to jump up, up, up into the standards, the standings. Really, bury Valfolia instead. The opposite happened. But you know what? You said it yourself last week, and you were expecting Valfolia to be a little bit better after picking up Andy Drews, and she finally showed up twenty point eight points. That's an ab- absolutely massive performance by her. Yeah, that's huge. And Annie's really good. And what I like about her game is that she isn't very streaky. She's as far as like big banger sort of opposite characters go. She's pretty consistent. Uh, She's never going to hit like 60 percent efficiency or anything like that. She'll always get blocked and make a couple errors a couple times. But she's never going to have that negative efficiency game either that we see from Karakurt every so often or Stisiak every so often. And some of the opposites where if they have a bad game, you know that you're guaranteed to lose. And he's not really going to do that all that much. The other thing, though, is that Volifolia just doesn't have that much around her. Like, Koshaleva is very much like an old-school sort of volleyball player. She just, like, hits these super high sky balls on the left side, like an old 30-plus-year-old Russian female volleyball player that when that used to work for him, and that is just isn't really how the game is played anymore. And uh, so I don't really think Volifolia is going to make the playoffs necessarily, but I just don't think they have enough time. Let's look at the standings again. I don't know where they're going to pick up like six points on the rest of that group of like four or five teams that's above them. I just don't really see that. Well, fair enough. We can we can uh, check that out uh, later. I mean, it all really depends on what their their schedule looks like, right? Yeah, true. You know, if if they if they play some more of those teams, like if they have to play Busto and Casa Maggiore, um you know, maybe a Bergamo uh, in there, and maybe some of the the lower teams. It all it all depends. Like if they if they if they have to play the upper half of of that draw, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But if they're playing the I lower just, half, then... just scan through it. They've got uh, one game against a really bad team. Actually, two. They've got Perugia and Macerata, but they have also got Novara, and then everything else is those teams that they're competing with. So actually, maybe maybe they've got a shot there. They've got to take three points from both Perugia and Macerata, and. I think that's a, kind of a segue in terms of like needing to beat the bad teams. It's worth pointing out that Coneliana went five with Pina Rolo for some reason, but that reason is that they started the bench. <laughs> uh, Coneliano started the entire bench. Uh, no Voos, no Hawk, no Kelsey Robinson, no, uh, not really, no anybody. Uh, Catherine Plummer was the only one to play all five sets, and she was really good. But they brought in all they brought in the bench in the third and figured it out. But if, if in case you're confused by that scoreline, that's what happened there. Yeah, we don't even see Alexa Gray on the roster right now, so I'm wondering yeah, if she's what's up with that? Or, or or what's going on there. So that's interesting. All right, do we want to talk about Malonza versus Scandici yes. or Navarra versus Kamaskash? All right, let's go to oh. Malonza versus Scandici. I mean, first and foremost, man, Jordan Thompson just doing everything she can for Malonza here. 28 points, just not getting any other help. Jordan Thompson looked bad, only three Um what what are we what are we seeing here with Jordan, this team? Jordan Larson looks sorry, bad. Jordan Larson, yes. Two yeah, two two different Jordans, both Americans. Yeah, Larson was not good at all. Thompson was good until the fifth. Uh she was not good at all in the fifth. Um definitely had a hand in them losing that fifteen to seven, which is not close. But That's what we're, what I'm confused here is with Scandici. And I don't know everything about what happened here. They now they did win the match in five. It was a big one towards the top of the standings. There's something going on with their head coach, this Barbellini character, who I don't particularly like. He's got some sort of vendetta against Elena Pietrini. Somebody, somebody in the chat, let, let me know what, what's, what's actually going on here more so. But it wasn't in this match, but it was in some other one that Pietrini was seen like going, she got subbed out and she was like on the bench crying. This, this, this coach is like berating one of his best and most important players and not only does Scandici need outside hitters they need Italians they have a massive problem with the foreigner limit on that team whatever whatever their coach has got against Elena Pietrini who's a world championship starter 
you've got to figure it out and make sure one of your most important players is, is able to play. I don't really understand what's going on there. Yeah, no, me neither. And, and what's even more interesting about this Candici team is this is a team that went out and got uh, uh, got a new setter over the, the winter transfer market. They went and picked up Bayao uh, from from the Chinese national team, presumably to, to partner with Zhu Ting. They let Malinov go. And since then, they've kind of been bad. You know, like they've they've kind of gone down, and and like, yes, they were able to, to to pick up a win, but let's be honest, um, Varival Malonza is the reason of the Varival Malonza um, figured, figured out, out award of the week award <laughs> for a reason, right? So beating them isn't 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 much. I mean, hey, you've got Magdalena Stesiak, you just absolutely bury on the bench for some reason. I mean, why even pay her a contract if you're just not going to play her like that? So. Yeah, it, it it just continues to to surprise me about how average some of these top teams in the leg of Volley Feminili look at this point. Other than Caneliano, it's weird because everybody's been trying to just, you know, participate in the arms race. The, 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 those that have the resources to try and keep up in transfers in the offseason just don't know how to build rosters. It's it's yeah. not a it's we, we we talk about it all the time. We don't have to go that deep into it, but it's not all about grabbing as much talent as you can, Malonza. You need to actually think about how those pieces are going to fit together. Figure it out. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, so I mean, Scand- kind of Scand- all I have for that match. <laughs> yeah, Scandici does that. That is their fourth win, fourth win in a row. Um, so that's that's really good for for them. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, they they've they've got to figure it out for for sure all right uh the next one to look at uh we mentioned novara and some interesting interesting comments made um by their president um considering that basically they had five players working on the court and one of them wasn't working and that was the opposite and kind of you figure it out which is i think maybe some retaliation the fact that we're hearing that um, character has signed already signed for Kaliningrad. Uh, yeah, in Russia next Russian year. Oh, man, Karakur took that one part 27 points. She put the team on her back, and it looked like she was good, and everyone else was a little bit average. That is actually that, that is more accurate for the Novara that we've seen most of this year. Now, that's not entirely their fault because they've had they had the injury to Jordan Poulter and the injury to Mackenzie Adams for most of the year. Uh, she's back now, but. This has been Novara's identity all year long is that everybody knew that Kara Kurt was going to have to carry them. So I don't understand why when when you give a player, a capable player who can sometimes be streaky, when when you rely upon her to carry the team and she has one or two bad games that you know she's going to have, you can't come out as ownership and, and like publicly bury her like that. What's that going to do for your locker room? No, absolutely, especially because there's so many important games for Navarra to come up. You've got the oh, Champions yeah. League quarterfinals coming up. You still have six games in the, in the regular season. In I mean, Bergamo is nine points behind them, so they're they're not really going to be caught. Up, but like they could they could if if they start winning some games, they could climb themselves up all the way to third. They're only six points behind Milano. That's only two games behind if if you're winning in three sets. So. They have the the ability to push. It's just an, a weird and odd comment to make uh, by the owner of Novara. But like once again, we've we've heard that you know it seems like the quality just isn't there, and that players just don't want to play for Novara. So very very interesting there, and it just kind of muddles everything a lot more. Novara's schedule for the rest of the Lega Volley Femminile season, anyway, is hard. They have is it? hard games coming up. Yeah, they have Firenze followed by Corneliano, uh, followed by Perugia, which is the one easy one. Then they have Malonza, which is a massive game. Uh, then Valfolia, who might be in the mix at that point, and then Cuneo. Like that is a harder than average remaining schedule, plus Champions League. Yeah, that that will not be easy. I mean, we just talked about it. I'm almost I'm almost tempted to pick, especially with that type of um, just friction within the team. It's going to be so hard to win. So if you're playing against a team like Stuttgart, who's the underdogs, and everyone knows they're the, they're the underdogs, they have nothing to lose. That's a dangerous situation for for uh, Navarra to be in. I could see it. 
All right. Is uh, anything else about the Lega Volley Feminile or women's volleyball in general? Or uh, I think we should hit a little bit of VLA before we talk to our special guest, yes. who I believe is still online. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I can't believe he stayed quiet this entire time. That's that's <laughs> that's the biggest surprise of, of the week for sure. Rob, what the hell happened in the VLA this weekend? Because as far as I've known, LVC has been one of the top teams in, in the league. You know, we talked about maybe um, the force being able to these being able to take the win but instead they go three and one lbc goes one and three what is going on uh over in in the vl east break it down for us like first and foremost who's who's breaking through right now for the northeast force to push them to that three and one one record so they picked up a couple a couple arms what the northeast force needed this team out of connecticut they needed wing talent they needed a little bit of firepower and they got it they got a, a kid that i know actually two chicago kids One's a uh, Trevor Weiskircher is like a big, long, like wiry six, seven outside. Who's actually a very good ball control player. And then another one's this kid, Evan Lindley, who's like a really springy lefty from NYU. They picked both of them up and they, they, they helped a lot. But what I really was impressed with the Northeast Forest in Boston over the weekend was roster management. And that is something that we talk about in the VLA all the time, because these guys play so many games like they're playing. They're playing four games in two days. Sometimes in, in these bigger tournaments, like the one we have coming up this weekend that we'll talk about, it can be maybe six matches in two days, which is ridiculous. And the way that you construct and then manage your roster for weekends like that is hard. And it is a learning curve. And teams take a while to figure that out. And I think of the teams this past weekend, the Northeast Force absolutely figured that out. And after going 0-4 just a couple weeks before, they looked like a completely different team. LVC, meanwhile, reigning champs, like they've, they've owned this division for years. They went 4-0 a couple weeks ago. They lost their setter. So they, they have the, mm. the, re, the reigning MVP of the league. This guy, Joby Ramos, is a Hawaiian setter. And Joby, he's not hurt. He's, he was just back in Hawaii at home for a couple weeks. And yeah, without yeah, him, man. LVC was clueless. Absolutely clueless. They always kind of roll thin. But uh, because their guys are so mature and experienced and have such high volleyball IQs, they always figure it out. And the only match that they won was when they had a, at least a remotely predictable setter situation. Other than that, like the three matches they lost, their setter position was a revolving door. And obviously that is pretty important if you're a volleyball team. So uh, it was cool. I, I was in Boston. Boston was really fun. And this division was completely turned on its head because... At first, everybody assumed that LVC was going to win no problem, that the Northeast Force was like a bottom feeder team, and it was completely the opposite. So that was really cool. I enjoyed it. Fair enough. Real quick, when you do these, are you guys rocking one, one court or two? When it's an event like this with just three teams, it's just one. But when it's an event like this, damn, <laughs> coming up That's... this weekend with 20 teams, 20 for the Central Division Cup in Chicago. Uh, this one will be on four courts, uh, which is even even that's ambitious. <laughs> We've got four pools of five, doing like sort of an AVP-style five-team bracket pool format for pool play, which is cool. We've done that. We've done that for pool play in tournaments in the past. Yeah, we'll run this on four courts, and then uh, when bracket play gets started, we'll start the sort of like NFL Red Zone-style VLA all-day stream that we did in San Diego a few weeks ago. So uh, that's coming up this weekend. It's crazy. So this will be the biggest tournament the VLA has ever had. Last year's VLA Cup, like the big VLA Cup, had 19. This is a divisional oh, wow. cup tournament, and it has 20. Like This is insane. So uh, I'm going to be very busy this weekend, but I'm very much looking forward to it, especially it being a home game for me in Chicago. So um, actually tune in later tonight, actually. We're doing around the VLA to talk about this tournament more. Um, if I had to pick right now, oh, man. Um I think this might be the tournament that the, Chica that the Chicago Icemen figure it out. I think they've okay. got a great chance to win. Um, but also, uh, Milwaukee Dive is a sleeper team. They're in the hardest pool for sure. That pool C is really, really hard. Uh, Dive's going to play Las Vegas Team NV, which is basically last year's ruckus team that won this tournament. They're going to play them in the first round of pools, and I actually think Milwaukee's going to win. So that team is going to be really good and could be a fun, uh, fun matchup if they get to the final and play against one another. Okay, sounds good. Should be a, a good one to uh, watch. You guys can uh, make sure to go check over that VLA all day stream because I checked it out for the West Cup. It was dope. It was yeah, it was cool. awesome. Yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it, man. You guys have like, are you are you showing up all day long? Are you gonna, are you showing up for seven a.m. seven thirty a.m. game on oh, Saturday yeah. morning there? 
Whew. Oh, like, yeah. oh yeah. This is like yeah. this is basically like a club tournament, eh? With just game <laughs> much all, all, all day long. Are you wearing the suit too, like in the promo? Absolutely not. Uh, no, I will not be wearing the suit all day. I think there's I think there's eight slots of matches on Saturday on four courts. Which is ridiculous. So yeah, uh, this is going to be. I think it might be like four. I think it's forty-three matches total in two days. So that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot of volleyball. Uh, finals on Sunday afternoon are going to be really good. So uh, check out the VLA channel and all the VLA places on the internet for more on that. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, it 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 it. Ooh, big setter there. It should be a good one. I mean, you got teams from coming all over the place. You got teams from Dallas. You got teams from. Colorado. What what else do I see here? You yeah, got two new, teams new that have Colorado beers, team. beers as their logos. I love that with the the <laughs> Milwaukee Dive and the Beer City Brewers. Um, Brewers yeah. are a brand new team from Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is their first tournament. I'm curious to see how that goes for them. Okay. Yeah. Well. Well. One day we need to get a Canadian team in there. I'm working on it slowly. Yeah, I've slowly. been saying. I've been saying it for years. Uh, the, the the border is is happily open and welcoming teams from the north. Yeah, hundred percent. I was talking to a few of the guys who uh, who had wanted to put in teams last year, and you know it was just too tough with with COVID and stuff like that. But man, if we could get a Toronto Toronto team in there, I think I think we would do pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie. I, th- I think we would. I think we'd be up there. I mean, I know we'd be seated, but it, it might be to the detriment. I know we'd come in and uh, upset some teams pretty early. Oh, well, only one way to find out. Yeah. All right. All right. Before we go. We do need to give a shout out to one person and bring in our special guest that that we have teased. And I think we need to say it. First and foremost, Robbie, Robbie, Roddy Cuban Spike. Happy birthday, my friend. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Are you going to thank yourself again? No, I, I already did that. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much for having me here in a special uh, occasion. Because it's my birthday, so I invite me again myself <laughs> uh, to this uh, like sort of podcast. Uh, we are talking about volleyball, of course, but among other topics. And yes, uh, you, I, I was listening all this time uh, when you when you guys were mentioned uh, team of Cubans, of course. Uh, and I will give this time, uh, this time the uh, the correct, uh, I mean, answer to 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 Sinclair because um, it's hard to beat Perugia once. Imagine doing two times or three times. So uh, yeah, I I already, I don't see that happening. I think they needed to lose. At least one game in the season. Perugia to... needed to lose one game, but, but not that game. You know, the, yeah, uh, not the that only <laughs> the only thing we can agree is, is that they they have to lose at least one or two, but not that. You know, so uh, 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 it's a shame, but uh, it happens. It happens when, so when, when when Ronnie, when you have a game between Piacenza and Perugia, where Perugia has I lose Leon, one, man. I lose one. I lose well, money in that game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny betting on all the Cubans, but like no, the, both, the, I both those money teams always. have Cubans. I lose money always. I I thought, <laughs> look, look how stupid I am in in, in bets. I thought, you know, you know uh, uh, Jamczewski will will go to five sets like usual. Nope. <laughs> to Saxa, they were dominating the two first sets, and they go sweep uh, reverse or. Something like that. They 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 got coming back like four points in the last part of the set. Come on, I I I listened to Yuri Gladir an interview later that he was uh, blaming himself, of course the thing of Jambieski because no one in modern volleyball lose uh, advantage of four four points in the end of the set. Is 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 very rare to happen, but you know. At that level, yeah, he sh- at but that- I mean, he's Potter's a middle. He can't be blaming himself. But uh, so, w- what what other bets did you lose? I- I'm curious. Like when you see a team Piacenza and Perugia that both have Cubans, who do you root for? As as Mr. no, of Cuban, course, like you know, you know, I I have a very uh, very friendly relationship with uh, Robert Landon Simon, and of course, I have to support 
the thing of uh, Piacenza mostly because I don't like the way Herrera is uh, growing uh, among us Cubans. You know, they they think he is like some kind of messiahs, you know, coming from the heavens to help us in this VNL or international season or whatever after he, he performed well at the last Bollywood World Championship, of course. Uh, but I don't buy it. I, I think Bentara will be the next starter opposite of Perugia. You guys didn't talk about that topic, you know the yeah. Mark. We don't like to we don't like to confirm transfers until it's the actual off season. Of but course. I have heard about that, and I do think that Bentara is better than both Rick Liskey and Herrera. Uh, the only good uh, weapon that Herrera might have is the serve, and Bentara is also a good serve. So I I don't know uh, how how things gonna go for him, but uh, best of luck. Uh, at least he will have. Uh, all the room to play in the national team because we don't have any second opposite, I mean, at that level. So, uh, yeah, uh, Piacenza won. Uh, Julio Velasco was in the building. He, he the, the mighty coach, he was uh, later asking uh, something about the, the game and why did he think uh, Piacenza won. And like you mentioned, Everett, uh, Piacenza is a team that their main roster is full of people that have won at least something important in, in volleyball history. You know, you have uh, Olympic medalist, uh, gold medalist. Uh, Simon have won three times the, the, the Serie A and now four times the Coppa Italia. So you have a lot of experience there. They just need the... The, the the chance the right moment to 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 take that advantage and I for me at one point I saw that Perugia was more concerned about not losing the strike than their actual uh, match you know that makes a lot of sense and that's why I think like you said it was it's good for them to lose a match but not that match <laughs> uh, like. That's it, it's it's similar to the Corneliano win streak. Like when they lost like a ra a random regular season game, they were better for it afterwards because that regular season game didn't matter at the end of the day. But a Coppa Italia semifinal is a different story. At some point, you lose your focus and start thinking about things that doesn't matter at all, like a silly streak that it it, it uh, was uh, meant to to end at some point. And yeah, it comes uh, with a. Uh, uh, at the expense of losing a title. I know uh, Gino Chilci didn't like it because uh, it's it's very expensive to to sustain this team for 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 one more year. I, I think it's go not gonna happen. There is a rumor, like for example, Silishki or Trisilski going to <laughs> going to uh, Trentino. And that will be a, really? a, a interesting move because, as you know, guys, uh, Trisilki is now Italian and he yes. intends to play for Italian national team. And who is like the like the the small office of Italian national team is Trentino That's because right. all, all the Italians play there. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, like unfortunately, uh, that sorry, unfortunate, uh, but. That happened. I think from now on, Perugia will focus more on winning the thing than, you know, let's go again and have another streak. That, that doesn't matter. That, I, I agree with you. I, I saw people in the chat earlier saying that, oh, oh now Perugia's lost a the game. They, they, lost a, they lost a tournament. Now that there's, they're, they're done. They're, their season is over. I don't agree. I don't agree at all. I, I still think they're the best team in the world. And I think that it is going to be good for them in the long run to have lost a match. But I, and I'm sure that, like you brought up Gino Sirci, who's basically the Jerry Jones of volleyball. He's Perugia's like tyrant of an owner. He does not like he does not like losing in the Coppa Italia. He would be he would be more okay with like them playing the bench against like Chisterna in the regular season or something stupid and losing that one instead of losing. Uh, losing to Piacenza in a, in a meaningful tournament so, situation. So, one last question before you guys go, because I know he's late there and he's...
here. Like it's like late there too, dude. It's it's your birthday. Yeah, well, what are you doing? <laughs> what's my birthday? It's already over. I I'm drinking cheap wine. Maybe, uh, <laughs> cheap things, you know. Is, is is it to warm you up? Like, why are you wearing your coat indoors? Uh, Do they not have heaters in Spain? Like, what's going on over there? I have heater. I'm not so poor like you might think, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> It's not so cold like in Canada or Chicago, man. I mean, do I? I know now. Uh, if you go outside in Canada or Chicago, is is uh, snowing or something like that. You have to carry uh, the snow with with a what is the name? A shovel, a shovel, something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not in this case, but as you know, after living like all my youth and childhood in a place that is like a swarm. Uh, I never will be uh, comfortably in uh, with cold, cold environment. So uh, yeah, I uh, I we have like three degrees, something like that. Is like bro, that's, it's not even below freezing, and you're wearing a coat inside. Like, like oh, what's that, going on? That is like summer t- for you guys. So uh, okay, <laughs> uh, but uh, what's that? What's that? What talking? Um, Champions League. In Champions League, uh, even with Bartol Bez, you know, uh, there is no for man. If that that that's other if if Saxa win the three peat this year, I will not shave my hair because I am reserving this hair for the Canada match in the <laughs> at the VNL, you know. But if they, I don't know, man. I I have to do something because is it, there there is no way Poland win. You, you don't think you don't think there's any way that Zaxa wins? Uh, now, no. I I agree. I still think that Perugia is going to win Champions League. But we said the same thing about Zaxa the first year that they won. They had a disaster of a, of a road in the playoffs. They had to beat Lube. They had to beat Zenit Kazan. And they had to beat Trentino in the finals. And they did. That road was so hard. And now they have something similar. They have Trentino again. They'll probably have Perugia and who knows who they, who they might play on the finals if they were somehow to get there. We've seen crazier stuff, Ronnie. We have seen no, crazier I know, stuff. I know you. Noxta is really good. <laughs> I know and there's Americans on I that. You have seen, yeah, I, know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, let, let's see what's, what's going on. I, I saw the, the interview with uh, Eric and, and the, in the channel. Very, very good stuff, as always. Uh I don't know, man. I I think uh, it, you know, it's Saxa, Perugia, and I think uh, the winner of, I think Lube will will beat Halbank because just because the the time they they don't have training there in Turkey is is hard to to. That's a good point. To see what mm-hmm. happened after that. True. You think Lube beats Yashemski or no? Another another close match. Uh, I really don't like Lube, uh, what Lube is doing right now. After the rumors of maybe Rock Mosic coming on to Lube and take young place. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> for now, those are rumors. But uh, yeah, um, let, let's see what happens. Uh, uh, but... For for those who 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 follow my speeches and at the at the Discord, I need as soon as possible the Russian clubs because it, even if the Putin craziness, uh, the world of volleyball needs those guys because it's the I, I it's the balance. They are the strength. Poland is the middle term, and you have Italy. And you know, Kazan could could be a, another contender if they were playing this Champions League. The way he's playing yeah. Micah this year, I mean, I saw that video that IQ set back backhand something crazy. That was perfect, and it's a shame that he can uh, do it uh, in a competition like that. We will have to hope and wait to the VNL. And see what's what the future bring us. So yes, uh, thirty one years, thirty one years. You still Happy. are o- older than me. No, you you not Rob. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. 
he, Rob's younger than you. I'm technically older than you. I've already yeah, turned you, 31 you, this year. You just turned 31, right, Everett? Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah so, I, I'm I'm 28. I'm really Everett, to 28. Well, okay. Uh, Everett is 91. I'm 92, and you are 94. Something. No, 94. I'm in no, I'm in 92 as well. I, but my birthday's in January. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, I mean. I I have to hit I have to hit the gym, man, because I look like every grandpa or something, man. So uh, <laughs> maybe not man, a grandpa, the, but I've he, been hitting he, the gym. I've been slimming down. I've been look at that, like you know, if yeah, I was looking at some of the I old the older videos. I know. I, I uh, from from the last VNL that you that you show show up usually drinking beer, cheap beer or something to this <laughs> to this day. I noticed a great difference. I don't know if you will marry like Rob's uh, soon or something, but you are getting there. Me? No, no, on no, the no, other marriage, hand? no marriage for me. No marriage for me. I have, I have my girlfriend. We've been together now for four years. We live together. Oh, we're, we're good. But uh, real quick, though, Ronnie, have you talked to Simone since the win? Yeah. Yeah. What? He how is me, he feeling? He told me, uh, take it easy. Stop the craziness. It's just another uh, title for me about... I'm happy, but I've been there, you know. So uh... what a baller! <laughs> I love him. Yeah, but does does he think does he think this bodes well for the rest of this year? Like, does does he think Piacenza can make a run to the Scudetto potentially? Maybe, but the thing that he doesn't like uh, is the way Slatanov, the GM of Piacenza, is usually does things because. Uh, in comparison, I'm maybe he 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 thinks that Lube handled things better. It, it, it was well more organized than Piacenza. They spend a lot of money in summer, and look how how they are going in sixth place. Do you think that is a <laughs> a right place for a team that invested so much in the summer? I think not, and you know it, and uh, uh, Rob know it, knows it. Yes, they had injuries like Lucarelli surgery, Leal now, uh, Leal undisclosure fight bar, something like that. You know, <laughs> but uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't talk about that enough. On even the show. I kind of wish that. even Simon got inju injured at some point, and you guys asked me what happened. Uh, it was a back mi minor back problem, but. It, yeah, I remember that. He gave the chance of uh, Alonso to play a little bit, and then Alonso injured or something like that happened. And yeah, he's a team that has been struggling all the time. So uh, mm, I'm glad that they at least want something to uh, keep the money flowing. Because <laughs> yeah, good point. It's, it's not it's not easy to ask uh, sponsors to to give them like three million or something to build uh, a decent team so i don't know the numbers i only know that simone is like for the next season and the season after the paris olympics and that's it uh i'm glad for him because he won the case against sala crusader and won a money that he didn't even that's play right. <laughs> He didn't even play. So imagine to win something that that a salary of a whole year that you didn't even play, just because you yeah, got, a... got, got paid for a whole year to not even play. I, yeah, I, I didn't know enough about what was really going on there to bring it up on the show. But yeah, Simone had some like contract dispute with Sada Crucero, and they ended up paying him a bunch of money. So good for him. Speaking, yeah, Simone's speaking, having a pretty good couple of weeks. Speaking about Sala Crusado, now that we are entering yeah, in play of songs, like in Brazil. I, Ronnie, I, I do not have time to get into Sala Crucero, man. We can't talk about yeah. Miguel Lopez getting suspended. We can't do that. We already no, uh, he was su suspended only for three games, and the court also dismissed Wallace's uh, craziness. So uh, Sala Crusado lawyers uh, doing, <laughs> doing it well. <laughs> Yeah, man. They get, Brazil, their Brazil ways. fans are angry because they 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 want they wanted their asses, but you know, shit happens. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Well I, I, I think we got to wrap it up with that, buddy. I got I got to get out of here. Uh, but th thank you, Ronnie, for coming thank on. You. That was awesome. Thank you for having Happy me. Birth Always. Happy birthday, my friend. Always and feliz cumpleaños, Ronnie. Thank mm. you for. Uh, Rosetta Stone is doing things over there. So, uh, 
Promise me one thing. When BNL comes, I want at least one program to talk about the power balance that that thing you do. Hey, because baby, you you come to Ottawa and you come hang out with us in Ottawa for week one. I we can, make that happen. Bro, we make I have that exams. happen. Like I have Cuba's exams. Cuba, USA, and Canada. Come on, Ronnie. It's crazy, like, you can't be there, Ronnie. Crazy, like there's there's you can't be telling me. Oh, I want an up. No, you you get an episode. You come to Ottawa. You you that's when you get your episode. <laughs> we set a camera up in the stands. You and I sit beside each other for that first game on the Tuesday night. Canada versus Cuba. We talk shit the entire time. That's that's what I want. I would pay to watch that. I really no, would. because <laughs> if if something happens, you know, Cuba lose, I I I cannot show my face again for in that Discord. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we know that's that that's why I, that's why I put it on the line. I was going to have to sing the Canadian national anthem in French if we lost know, those okay. and that was that was never going to happen. Okay, Rob, so, you have to go. So uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. I will be there. Uh, no in Ottawa, but in in your uh, po- previous podcast. So uh, yeah, let's see what what happened. And the uh, next year we will see. We yeah. I, right. I right. need to to travel soon to um, that part of 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 the of the world. So the, maybe we, the we North Seeker the North Seeker region would love to have you back. North right, Seeker, Ronnie, happy Charlie, happy uh, birthday, buddy. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Take care. See you, man. All All right. Right. Good night. Happy birthday. All right. Yeah. Thanks for watching, boys and girls. Uh, Thanks, Ronnie, for coming on. We'll be back next Tuesday, same time, same place. Uh, Enjoy the volleyball this week. Join the Discord for more of Ronnie's rambling nonsense and some occasionally pretty good (laughs) memes. So uh, that's about it. We'll see you next week. Peace, guys. Have a good one. Peace. See you later. I go pick up Sam.